Welcome back to the 2020 Macabre Month of Horror. Today's review is for the 1979 horror flick, The Driller Killer. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Especially if you're a horror fan, because there is a metric ton of horror content coming out this month right here at Brickwall Pictures. <laughs> The Driller Killer is a somewhat notorious film, the subject of much controversy and even outright banned for a period of time. It was Abel Ferrara's first film, well, first non-porno film anyway. Abel Ferrara was the man behind films like Bad Lieutenant and King of New York. The Driller Killer is about a struggling artist with mental health issues named Reno. He's in a polyamorous relationship and he's got punk bad neighbors who keep him up all night with their incessant practice. They are awful, by the way, especially the lead singer. Jesus Christ, he sucks. In addition to painting, Reno's other hobby is going around at night and drilling holes into homeless men. <laughs> He never drills the punk band, though. Strange, as much of the film seems to be building up to him murdering them, but it just never happens. The character of Reno is played by Jimmy Lane, except Jimmy Lane doesn't exist. It's actually just Abel Ferrara himself. And it's the same pseudonym he used in his next film, This 45. He also used it previously in a porno, which he also directed under a different pseudonym. Abel Ferrara is front and center for the entire film. It's a tortured, unhinged character on a descent into total insanity. It's a good part to show your stuff as an actor. So, how is his stuff? Well, not great. Not very good at all, unfortunately. He's not awful, though, I'll give him that. He, he does manage to come up better than the entirety of the supporting cast. Honestly, it was a pretty bold move of Ferrara to exclusively cast people who can barely fucking speak, let alone act. So how much is Biggs gonna give us for the buffalo? Half the cast are just poor actors, and the other half seem like, completely drugged out of their minds to the point where they can barely squeak out their lines. That's the kind of idea I think we should have. But now, what, what is it? What the colors? You must know. You must feel the color. You must feel me. What is it of me that you are putting on here? It does have the effect of making Ferrara seem like a much better actor by contrast. So that's the silver lining, I guess. There's not a single likable character in the whole film. Our protagonist is the fucked up killer, and there's no one trying to stop him, really. There's no one trying to escape that has been developed as a real character that we can root for, except, I suppose, for one in the very closing minutes, but even that doesn't really play out with any suspense. There's no, like, cat and mouse chase or anything. The best character in the film is actually New York City itself. There's a ton of great raw, guerrilla-style footage of pre-gentrified New York. If that kind of thing is interesting to you, you'll probably get a kick out of the Driller Killer for that, if nothing else. Abel Ferrara has been pretty open about the film's origins as starting off as a Texas Chainsaw Massacre knockoff. It makes sense, you know, you just pick a different power tool to kill people with. Surprised we never got the bandsaw bloodbath or the belt sander slaughter. We did get the nail gun massacre, though, so... The New York City setting and the focus on the protagonist's psyche end up making the film feel more in line with Taxi Driver than with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ferrara even does his version of the iconic double edit with De Niro turning. But whereas I would call the editing in Taxi Driver masterful, I would call the editing in Driller Killer, uh, sloppy. <laughs> you might be asking, I know I was, does the Driller Killer live up to its title? And what a title it is, by the way. I'd say it does in a way. There are plenty of drilling killings. It's not one of those films that completely overpromises with the title. If you're just here for the kills and the gore, the Driller Killer will do the trick. There's plenty of killings, a decent amount of variety to them, and they're sufficiently bloody, even if it does seem a little too easy for the protagonist. No one tries to fight back at all. A couple people make pitiful attempts to flee, but... Otherwise, everyone just screams and they put their hands up, and I would imagine being killed by a drill would be a pretty slow process, actually. I mean, look at how long it takes him to get through a door in the beginning. It 
And human bones are a lot tougher to get through than wood, believe me. I don't think a drill would be a particularly efficient murder weapon. They already have to go out of their way to show an expository commercial on TV to explain how he powers the drill. Porter pack. That's right, Porter pack. Only nineteen ninety five. Discover Porter pack now. Available at Macy's, Gimbal's, Two Guys, and any participating hardware store near you. I'm sorry, but unless you go through the eye or through the ear or you aim for the throat, you're not killing anyone with a drill without them putting up a fight. Most of the time, he just drills them like like right here, like in the side, and I mean. Maybe you die from that. Eventually. Definitely not instantly, though. But I think the guy could pull through. I mean, the drill bit's not even that long, really. It might not even reach his vitals. Medical concerns aside, the main problem with the drill kills is their spacing throughout the film. The vast majority of the kills come right in a big cluster together. Reno goes on a crazy spree and kills a bunch of homeless men over the course of a single night. There are a few other kills, but they're mostly just in this one sequence. It makes the beginning of the film pretty dull, and it also lessens the impact of each drill kill on this crazy spree, since we're seeing them one right after another. Even outside of the killings, the driller killer is sleazy and grungy and gross. One could even call it nasty. And when it came out on VHS, I wonder what people called this nasty video. If you don't know what I'm hinting at, back in 1984, the UK passed the Video Recordings Act, which was meant to tighten up on censorship and protect the public from the obscene occurrences in exploitation films. It was some pearl-clutching bullshit. But as a result, certain films became banned on tape, and video stores weren't allowed to sell or rent them. These infamous films were dubbed Video Nasties. Some of the most well-known Video Nasties include the likes of Cannibal Holocaust, The Last House on the Left, I Spit on Your Grave, and Zombie. And the Driller Killer found itself on that list of prosecuted films. I hate this kind of censorship. I think it's harmful to cinema as a whole. Yeah, sure, Driller Killer is super sleazy, and no, it's not very good, but does it deserve to be banned? Absolutely not. The Video Nasty era is certainly an interesting piece of cinema history, and it's worth exploring, but it's also worth condemning. Do I recommend The Driller Killer? If what I've described sounds interesting to you, then yes. To most people, I would say definitely not. Even as a fan of sleazy horror, this one still felt more on the negative side than on the positive side for me. But there is a narrow slice of people who will really groove this sleazy Abel Ferrara joint. And if you think you might fall into that slice, then definitely give it a watch. The film's technically in the public domain now after a bunch of legal disputes, so tracking down a copy should be very easy. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already for more horror goodness all throughout October right here at Brickwell Pictures.